comes to fast food, the clue's in the title. It's not intended to be slow, a meal lingered over for hours on end. Just simple, tasty, and most importantly, speedy sustenance. Of course, the fast in fast food initially meant how quickly it's prepared. But how fast do you have to be when you're eating it? Now, it may not take long if you're on your own, but if you add in a few kids, perhaps a queue at the checkout, maybe a last-minute dessert, and suddenly your meal may not be quite as fast as intended. And as the family in our next film discovered, that could land you with a very unexpected penalty and leave a sour taste in the mouth. Fast food is synonymous with speed. No frills, just simple food quickly served. As market leader McDonald's likes to show in ads like this. Back in 1986, McDonald's was the first chain to open a drive through in Britain. Food so fast, you didn't even need to leave your car to collect it. But when Noel and Carol Endersby from Winnish took their grandchildren to McDonald's for a meal last summer, they did get out of the car to eat it, which is where their problems began. They'd landed at Gatwick after a holiday in Portugal, but wanting to give the kids a final treat on their drive home, they'd headed for a nearby McDonald's. Five kids, two adults, and a lot of luggage were spread across two cars, and it was Noel who got to the restaurant first. We separated and agreed to meet in McDonald's because the kids were hungry, tired, it's been a long journey, and Noel got to McDonald's long before about, I did, About didn't 20 you? minutes, I think, before yeah. you got there. So eventually we arrived at McDonald's. We all went in together. And once inside, they wasted no time starting the complex operation of feeding all their grandchildren. As you would imagine, you're not in and out there in 10 minutes when you've got five children all fussing about what they want to eat. Then they wanted dessert. All in all, it, it took us um, a good hour to have a meal. That's not unusual as far as I'm concerned. Mm. So, after their food, drink, and a few trips to the loo, and a squabble or two, the family finally finished their lunch and left the restaurant. And they thought little more about it. Until around a fortnight later, when a letter arrived, telling Noel and Carol that their McDonald's family lunch had cost them a lot more than they'd realised. When the letter arrived, you were steaming, weren't you? Saying that this is really ridiculous, um, why are they charging us? Unbeknown to Noel and Carol, McDonald's impose a one-hour parking limit at some of their restaurants. Noel's car had been parked for 11 minutes longer than that. And as a result, he was now being told he had to stump up a £100 penalty charge. Well, I said to you, didn't I, don't worry about it. We're, we're customers, clearly. We thought it would be fine. We'll just write to them, explain the circumstances, and it will be fine. Mm. And that's what you did, wasn't it? This McDonald's car park is operated by a private parking company called Met, who said that they would reduce the charge to £50 if paid within the first two weeks. So, Noel paid up, while at the same time appealing to McDonald's to waive the charge altogether. After all, they bought dinner for all five grandchildren at the restaurant. But McDonald's response was a firm no. I was quite dismayed, actually. You know, I, I couldn't believe that McDonald's, a company of that repute would would just um, would just treat their customers in such a terrible way you know we actually spent our money in there and um, it just seems ridiculous a hundred pound is a very big fine for parking just 11 minutes over an hour if you had a two hour lunch slot then maybe that would be different but a um, hundred pound is, is a very steep charge Noel and Carol say that no meal time with their five grandchildren is fast and with free Wi-Fi, a play area, balloons and toys for the kids, McDonald's don't always make it easy to eat and run. They give the children toys, packs and things like that. Um, so we didn't feel that we should have been under a time limit. White foot, blue. Now Noel could have appealed to Poplar, whose initials stand for Parking on Private Land Appeals. And that's exactly what Charlie Webley did when he too received a penalty charge after parking for more than an hour at the same McDonald's near Gatwick. In August 2013, diabetic Charlie had made a pit stop at McDonald's after his blood sugar levels had fallen dramatically whilst driving. He stayed there until they returned to normal. 
but in doing so was in the car park for 16 minutes longer than allowed, which earned him, just like Noel, a £100 parking charge. When Charlie's complaints to the company that operates the car park got him nowhere, he asked Poplar to consider his case, and they told the company to drop the charge. And we've heard from other rip-off Britain viewers who've outstayed their welcome at McDonald's car parks across the country. Len Thompson from Somerset stopped at McDonald's in Banbury for some food and a quick snooze before getting back on the road. But he was 32 minutes late leaving the car park. He too was asked to pay that £100 charge, although the parking company did drop it when he wrote and explained the situation. When we contacted McDonald's, the company told us that parking restrictions have proved necessary at almost one in six of their restaurants after clear evidence that the car parks were being misused. For example, by minicab drivers using them as waiting bays or people leaving their vehicles for hours or even days while they use nearby shopping centers or airports. In most cases, the limit is 90 minutes, but near airports, as in this case, it's an hour. McDonald's says it doesn't profit from the charges and works with industry-approved contractors to ensure that the parking policy is fair and very clearly communicated. It suggests anyone who thinks they might need to stay longer than the time allowed should contact the manager in advance. The parking company McDonald's use, Met Parking, told us that where genuine mitigating circumstances apply, they do cancel notices on a case-by-case -case basis. And they insisted that in all the car parks they operate, any restrictions, including time limits, are communicated clearly on signage. Of course, McDonald's isn't the only fast food chain that can have a time limit in its car parks. But Noel and Carol won't be rushing back, at least not with the five grandchildren in tow. Will we be going back to McDonald's? Definitely not. Yeah, if the time limit's there, we won't stop. We'll go somewhere else.